654 1320 WILS. Vice President Joe Biden finally making his announcement today saying that he will not be running for president. So, uh, well, what does that mean for Hillary Clinton? Is there any point in, in even uh, in just why don't we just nominate her right now? Uh, Debbie Georgiatis, political strategist, her book, Ladies Can We Talk, also on Facebook, Ladies Can We Talk, find her there. Uh, Debbie, great to have you here. Mike, thanks for having me back. Hello. And so, Joe Biden, why do you think he stretched it out? I mean, why was it so dramatic? You know, I did always take him his words at face value, and I don't do that often in politics, but I think it was a personal struggle for their family. I think they actually worked through the loss of a son and how much turmoil the campaign. So I really did take him at face value, but I also think he probably made the right call, which mm-hmm. is today he didn't really say he said when he announced he wouldn't run, it's, you know, that his family had decided they'd put this, they could deal with this race, even despite the loss of their son, but he'd run out of time. And I think he's probably right. I mean, 72 years old, do you think he really could have had a, a serious run and had the energy to really pursue this? <laughs> well, I think there are mainstream blue-collar Democrat voters who voted Democrat their whole life who don't like Hillary very well. Uh, I think there are much more, many more Biden connections to the union world. And so, yeah, I think he might have given her a little bit of run for her money. I don't know personally if he had the energy for it, but, um, you know, I, I think he would have, there's a, there's a swath of Democrat voters who would have been happy to see him get in. Now, he, today he seemed to actually criticize uh, Hillary Clinton, talking about how she, you know, she called Republicans her enemies. He, he said uh, they are our opposition. They're not our enemies. Well, why do you think he made these kinds of comments today? You know, I, well, I think he's right in the things that he's saying. And I think in, in his case, he's kind of legitimizing who he is. He's just not, he's not bowing down and saying, well, now that I'm out, you know, everything Hillary says goes. And I do think she made a very bad decision in the last Demo- in the first Democrat debate when they were each asked to name the biggest enemy they had created, essentially, in their political life. And she said, Republicans, I think that was bad for the party. I think Joe Biden thinks he's helping the party and saying, come on, you know, he's talking to those voters who maybe will come over to them. Do you think President Obama, behind closed doors, was trying to urge him on to run? Absolutely. So neither of them like Hillary Clinton? Is that your assessment? (laughs) Well, I know the... the, um, problems or, or the uh, dislike between the Obamas and the Clintons is well known. I think mm-hmm. I think President Obama is really hoping Joe Biden would get in. And um, I don't know whether Joe Biden dislikes her particularly or not, but um, I think that President Obama really wants Joe Biden to get in. I'm sure he's disappointed because uh, the heir apparent, as you were saying, obviously at the start of this was yeah. the heir apparent is Hillary. She's going to end up with the nomination. Really, but he had her as her, his uh, secretary of state. What, why would he have done that if he didn't like her? Well, there's a lot of speculation about that. It's that, that adage about, you know, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he also wanted to do a bit of an olive branch to the Hillary supporters or many women, Democrat voters especially, who really wanted the first woman president. And they were disappointed to see that, that uh, Obama could sweep in and just push her aside so quickly. So I think it was an olive branch to those kind of voters mm-hmm. who liked Hillary. Okay. Now, by the way, I'm talking to Debbie Georgiatis, political strategist. Um so, Debbie, what I mean, what happens now? We Biden's not in. Is is what's the point of the rest of this process now? Well, you, I'm sure your listeners and you um, saw also the announcement that the other there are there were actually five candidates in this race already, and Jim Webb, one of the other Democrats who was polling very low, below two percent, has decided to get out, and so it's really down mm. to Hillary, Bernie Sanders, Martin O'Malley, and Lincoln Chafee, and I think in the case of Bernie Sanders. He cares so much about his socialist views, and, and that is his word. He refers to himself as a, as a socialist. Mm-hmm. He will stay in just to keep sending that message about what he thinks should happen in America politically and economically. He thinks America should turn, the federal government should turn into a wealth redistributor. And so I don't think he'll get out um, unless mm-hmm. he just has to runs out of money. And I don't know about Martin O'Malley and Lincoln Chafee. They're both polling so poorly. I'm not sure why they stay in. I mean, can you think of any recent uh, race that, that's been so uh, apparently just decided ahead of time? Oh, wow. That's a good question. I mean, because um, nothing comes now, to mind. I mean, the way I mean, it's only begun and she's locked it in, it looks like. Yeah, not the top of my head. And, you know, really, 
for, you know, the Democrat Party, she was very, she made a lot of people excited back in 2008. They saw her willingness to serve as his secretary, Obama's secretary of state as a move of graciousness Mm -hmm. and as a senator. So I think that she, in a lot of people's view, she's kind of bided her time and it's her turn. I've heard other, you know, well, I've heard uh, commentators saying that they believe that she will not be a nominee. Certainly Republican uh, commentators believe uh, they've been saying all along, you know, when it's all said and done, you'll be surprised. It won't be her. Do you think there's any chance of that uh, happening now? Barring indictment, no, there's no chance. And I mean, I, I almost think no matter how badly she performs, she's testifying this week. In fact, tomorrow. Well, tomorrow, yeah. Tomorrow. yeah. Uh, on the, uh, in the Benghazi hearing in the U.S. House. And I think the people who love her, they're just not going to really mind what she says. So barring her being indicted, she will be the candidate, She's in, there. in my opinion. And what, uh, tomorrow, what, what do you think we're going to see anything uh, particularly uh, exciting tomorrow during the hearings? You know, I think we may. I think that there was a, a speech or, or an announcement by Trey Gowdy recently, who is the chair of the committee who will be questioning her. And he was saying, you know, we have we have found a lot. We've dug a lot. Give us time to present what we have. So I think he may have some things that the public hasn't heard about yet in relation to her emails mm-hmm. and her conduct on the United Benghazi. So um, I think maybe some fireworks. I think he's probably hoping to just lay out the case and his committee is not politically motivated, but rather than motivated to um, speak up for the people who are lost in Benghazi, right. speak up for the American people. So, yeah, I think he's going to be pretty tough, and it'll be interesting to see how she reacts. No, well, she, she wasn't very pleased last time. Do you think she'll have a different uh, approach this time? <laughs> well, I think her, my guess is that all of the, the work she's doing in preparation is all about Staying composed, stay, like she was in the last debate. I thought she did a great job in the last debate. She remained composed. She held her ground. I think she doesn't want to have a another what difference does it make moment. She wants to seem serious and obviously concerned about the people who are lost. I think she's working very hard just to have answers ready that make her seem presidential. Yeah. I mean, even as a political strategist and following politics, are you a little disappointed that it's not going to be somewhat interesting, the race now? You know, I have to say the only thing I love about this race, I think it's a very healthy discussion in the American kind of political conversation to have Bernie Sanders in the race still laying out for America what socialism means, what it really means. Because America, when we have some things that we are already trending socialist, but to have that conversation is very healthy because I think most people, and, and sadly the younger generation, they did not grow up learning the evils of socialism. And so I think that conversation is a great one to have for America. I think it's very healthy. Yeah. You, you think he's going to highlight the problems of just the fact that he's speaking about it? People understand some of the problems with socialism? Well, I will tell you that there is a uh, – yes, I do. I think as he talked about it, mm-hmm. there was actually a woman who uh, started a website, and I'm trying to dig through I can't find her name quickly enough, but she lives in Denmark – and she, because Denmark is one country that Bernie Sanders has pointed to as this fabulous socialist utopia, right. and she, this woman, put out this, she wrote a book and she has a website, essentially saying socialism makes misery. None of us in Sweden, and excuse me, in Denmark can, is $10 for a gallon of gas. Right. No one ever, ever ends up owning a car or a house because everything's so expensive. So I think if he talks about it, it brings other commentators out to say, wait, let's look and see what this socialism stuff is before we get so excited about it. Well, yeah, and if you ever dealt with a government agency in any way to try to uh, resolve any kind of issue, you'll know right away what a horrible experience that can be. Last thing we want. Um, Debbie Georgianis, political strategist. Ladies, Can We Talk? That is her book. Also, you're on Facebook, right? Ladies, Can We Talk there? Yes, and we actually have a brand new uh, all um, fixed up website, ladieskinwetalk.org. It's just great. I urge your listeners to go there. Uh, there's go. the site, ladieskinwetalk.org. Check her out. Debbie, it's been a pleasure. Thank you. Mike, thanks for having me. Yep, and that is it for us. We're back tomorrow. Have a good night.